Well, hey there, Thomas Kissinger back with you again, and this will be Lessons from History, Part 7, once again reading from George Saris' book, Heaven's Doors, and we're going to be going through a little bit more information about the early church father, Theodore of Mopsuestia, and also just highlighting some of the names of the other early church fathers that believed in the ultimate restoration of all things, and then just some other general information. So let's pick up where we left off. During his lifetime, Theodore of Mopsuestia was always regarded as a faithful servant of the church. He was a prominent religious author and was even consulted by distant bishops on important questions. He died in the peace of the church and at the height of a great reputation. However, in a situation similar to that of Origen, Theodore was personally condemned 125 years after his death. At the same general council of Constantinople called by Justinian I in A.D. 553. Theodore's belief in ultimate restoration, however, was not condemned at that council. Other well-known leaders within the early church believed in ultimate restoration, or at least did not regard it as a dangerous error. God help me to pronounce these names here. The main patristic supporters of the restoration theory, such as Bardazin, Clement, Origen, Didymus, St. Anthony, St. Pamphilus, Martyr, Methodius, St. Macrina, St. Gregory of Nyssa, and probably the other two Cappadocians, St. Evagrius Ponticus, Diodore of Tarsus, Theodore of Mopsuestia, St. John of Jerusalem, Rufinus, St. Jerome, and St. Augustine, at least initially, Cassian, St. Isaac of Nineveh, St. John of Dalyatha, Dionysius, the Areopagite, probably St. Maximus the Confessor, up to John the Scot, Aragena, and many others grounded their Christian doctrine, first of all, in the Bible. Even St. Augustine, the most influential supporter of endless punishment in the early church, acknowledged that in his day, and here's a quote from him, some, indeed very many, deplore the notion of the eternal punishment of the damned and their interminable and perpetual misery. This is entitled, Their Character and Motivation. The prominent defenders of the doctrine of ultimate restoration were strong believers in the divinity of Christ, the Trinity, the Incarnation and the Atonement, and the doctrine of regeneration. They were exemplary in their personal piety, their devotion to Christ, their Christian activity, and their missionary zeal, as well as their learning and intellectual power and accomplishments. In fact, they were greatly superior in these areas to many who condemned them in later ages. Their teaching was strongest in the Greek-speaking portion of the church where the language of the New Testament was a living tongue. It was strongest in the church's greatest era of growth and impact, and it declined as the church's purity declined. Their traditional view of endless punishment, on the other hand, was strongest where the New Testament was less read in its original language and during the most corrupt ages of the church. Hear that again. The traditional view of endless punishment, on the other hand, was strongest where the New Testament was less read in its original language and during the most corrupt ages of the church. And as we touched on in a previous teaching, St. Augustine, who is really the champion of the teaching of eternal torture, he did not know how to read or write in the Greek language. And of course, the New Testament was written in Greek, and he was at a great disadvantage to those other early church fathers who knew the Greek and knew what it said about punishment, that it was for the purpose of correction, and that it was ionios of the ages or belonging to the ages of time for a specific purpose period of time, but that it would come to an end. Clement of Alexandria, Origen, Gregory of Nyssa, 
Diodorus of Tarsus, Theodore of Mopsuestia, and others saw God as the one who desires the salvation of all and is wise enough and powerful enough to accomplish what he desires. Hallelujah. J.W. Hansen, a strong supporter of restoration in the 19th century, made a very insightful observation about the motivation of many in the early Christian church who believed that God would ultimately restore all. The ta and here's a quote from him, J.W. Hansen. The talismatic word of the Alexandrian fathers as of the New Testament was Father. This word, as now, unlocked all mysteries, solved all problems, and explained all the enigmas of time and eternity. Holding God as Father, punishment was held to be remedial, and therefore restorative, and final recovery from sin universal. Get that again. Holding God as Father. God is our Father, ladies and gentlemen. He loves us. He's a loving Father. Punishment was held to be remedial and therefore restorative and final recovery from sin universal. For centuries in Christendom after the Alexandrian form of Christianity had waned, the fatherhood of God was a lost truth. And most of the worst errors of the modern creeds are due to that single fact more than to all other causes. God is our Father. You want to know who God is? You study that story of, as most people call it, the prodigal son, or you could call it the two lost sons. The Father was waiting to forgive that prodigal son when he came back. And the father even forgave the self-righteous son who didn't want to see his brother forgiven. That's how we have to see our God because that's who he is. Remember when Jesus taught us how to pray, he said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and so on. But God is our Father. And we have to understand that everything goes through the love of God, the fatherhood of God. Yes, these extreme attributes such as wrath, vengeance, destruction, judgment, punishment, hell, fire, the lake of fire. Those come through the Father and they are for correction, they're for purification, they are for restoration. God is the Savior of all mankind. The early church fathers knew it. It was the predominant view for almost 500 years until corruption came in in man's thinking and in his interpretation of the scriptures. St. Augustine couldn't even read and write in Greek. He didn't know the Greek language and he became one of the champions of eternal torture because he didn't even understand the original language. He was at a great disadvantage. Most people, most Christians don't even know this information that the early church fathers, the majority of them, believed that Jesus Christ was the Savior of all men in the fullness of time and they understood punishment in the Bible and that it was for the purpose of correction. Because remember, our God is a loving Father and He's a great Father. He loses none of His children in the fullness of time.